Divine Truth Paget Messages. These are discussions of individual messages received by James Paget. Jesus and Mary discuss sin and redemption. The message was received from Jesus on the 2nd of March, 1916. This session was recorded on the 28th of October, 2015, in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello there, welcome everybody again to one of our recordings. Uh, this recording we're going to be discussing a Paget message. It's a message of my own from 1916, March, I think it's March the 2nd. And um, it being one of my own messages, I should know what I was, <laughs> what I was trying to say, which I feel quite strongly about actually still. So what we'd like to do, and Mary's here with me, and we're going to discuss this Paget message together. Firstly, we're going to read it paragraph by paragraph and then have some discussions about the key paragraphs. It's a very short message, so it does not mean though that it's probably going to be a short discussion. <laughs> Knowing us, it will be long. <laughs> because there, there are some really key points here contained in this message that I feel most people who read the Paget messages miss out completely almost. So let's uh, focus on the message and see what it has to say. Okay, I'll read the first few paragraphs and then Mary will join in on our conversation. So this is how the redeemed soul is saved from the penalties that sin and error has brought upon it. I am here, Jesus. I desire to write tonight on the subject of how the redeemed soul is saved from the penalties which sin and error has brought upon it. When the soul is in a condition of sin and error, it is not responsive to the inflowing of the Holy Spirit. And in order to get into a condition of receptivity to these influences, it must have an awakening as to its actual condition of enslavement by these things. And until such an awakening comes to it, there is no possibility of its receiving the love of God into it and of turning its thoughts to the truths of God and to the practices of life that will help it in its progress towards a condition of freedom. So the first paragraph well, was the second paragraph, but it's a, uh, it probably contains what I feel is one of the most important statements that most people neglect. Mm -hmm. And that is that divine love cannot flow into the soul because the Holy Spirit cannot connect to the soul mm -hmm. unless it gets out of a condition of sin and error or it gets, out, it gets into a condition of receptivity is the best way of putting it yeah. and has an awakening to its condition of enslavement to sin and error. And that, to me, is one of the biggest points that the majority of people neglect when it comes to receiving God's, truth, God's mm -hmm. love. They believe that God's love will somehow wash them clean of their sin and error without them having to do anything about coming to some kind of awareness of the sin and error that exists within them. Yeah. And the fact is, this message says quite clearly the complete opposite to that. It does. That it says that we must first work through an awareness of the sin and error we actually have and we'll talk more about why that's the case, yeah. but it says quite clearly that we have to work through an awareness of the sin and error before any sin and error can actually leave us. Yes. yes. And maybe even if we go back uh, to the very first statement that you make, mm -hmm. you're talking about um, the how a soul is redeemed and saved from the penalties of sin and error. And obviously, people who've read the Paget messages and who are accustomed to divine truth know that there's penalties upon a soul that's in sin and error mm -hmm. um, that can be removed through the reception of divine love. Well, the causes of such are removed through the reception of divine love. Yes. And, and this is the thing that we need to clarify more clearly. As it, as it says quite clearly here, we must first get, have an awakening as to our actual condition of enslavement to the, the sin and error that causes the blocking between ourselves and the flow of God's love. And then, in other words, the blocking between ourselves and the Holy Spirit being able to make a connection mm -hmm. so that God's love can flow through it. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is like a conduit. Mm -hmm. So it's a pipe, if you like, via which divine love flows. And the Holy Spirit cannot make a connection to a soul that's enslaved to sin and error and has no awareness of the enslavement. Yes. 
it can connect to a soul that has sin and error as long as the sin and error as long as the soul has an awareness of the sin and error that is within it and starts to engage the process of repentance mm -hmm. now it can connect to the soul mm. but before the condition of repentance begins there is no connection between the soul and the holy spirit at all there can be no connection because the holy spirit is dependent on you being in a condition of acceptance of truth yeah. right so so this is the main and it's a, if you can think about it it's like a scientific process you must first be aware of the truth of the condition you're in before you can start engaging the law of divine love which is also repentance before you engage repentance which allows divine love to flow into the soul so this is a condition that the majority of people need to allow themselves to to find where they are enslaved to sin and not wanting to have an awareness of mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what you're saying there is that we can't receive God's love unless we are firstly at least wanting to be in a, to be aware, to have an awakening of our condition of sin. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and obviously we obviously go through different uh, stages of that where you have an awakening of your condition as regards to sin in one direction but not an awakening yet in your condition of sin as regards another direction yeah so so it so every time you receive a little bit more of divine love it, it enables another awakening to occur but the very first awakening that has to occur has to occur within by your own effort and, and as, as this message talks about, through other influences. Mm -hmm. it, it does not occur by you first receiving some divine love. Yep. Divine love will not be received until the awakening has occurred. Yeah. Then, you have the, then you have the ability to receive some divine love. And what you're saying there is that you can't actually, sin can't be removed from you unless you are firstly conscious of the existence of the sin. And not only conscious of the existence of the sin generally, because you know it's one thing to be able to say, "I'm a sinner, aren't I yes. terrible?" Let's yeah. you know, yeah. let's uh, you know, connect to God and hope for, that God's love will wash me free of these sins. That's not how it works. God's love can only wash you free of the sins that you are aware of. Mm -hmm. They're and, very specific ways that you are sinning. Correct, yeah. and and that makes sense if you think about Definitely. it, because if you're completely unaware of the ways in which you're sinning then it makes like there, there is no repentance and therefore no engagement of the laws of repentance. Mm -hmm. There is also no ability to be forgiven because you're not even asking for forgiveness mm -hmm. on the areas where you've sinned because you don't believe you've sinned in the first place. <laughs> That's right. So it's quite clear that if you're going to receive God's forgiveness, which is a part of the process of the flow of divine love into the soul, that you are going to have to develop an awareness of your sin mm -hmm. first. And an awareness of your sin includes quite a number of things. It includes not only what the sin is and why it's a sin, but also uh, it, what damage it's done, not only to yourself, but also to other people's lives. Mm. And becoming aware of that is, is a part of the necessary, and a very necessary part before you can connect to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit's connection with your soul is only able to occur when you're in a condition of truth, where you acknowledge at least the truth that you've sinned in this particular area with these particular people and it's caused this particular damage. And now that you're in this awareness, you would most probably, if you were sincere, feel a contrite heart, a, yeah. a spirit of repentance. And this contrite heart or spirit of repentance develops a longing within the soul to be forgiven by God and the longing within your soul allows for the love to flow through the conduit, the Holy Spirit, which is now connected to you because you're in a condition of truth. Yeah. So it's quite uh, an easy process to understand yeah. if you understand it clearly. But, but if you start to tell yourself that all you have to do is ask for God's love to come and it should come, and that all of your sins will be washed away without you having any awareness, no, that is definitely not true, which is exactly what this... Mm -hmm. um, message is talking about and saying that it's not true and and what <coughs> I to me it makes complete logical sense of course like, if God loves us as a parent as he does 
He wants us to know ourselves completely, to understand our will, this gift that he's given us, mm -hmm. to understand the power of our will, mm -hmm. to create joy or pain or suffering, and also to embrace that will to want to love. Yes. So all of his laws are designed to do that. And so why would he go forgiving and removing causes that we haven't yet discovered ourselves? We haven't yet gone through this process of self-awareness, self-knowledge and embraced our will to desire love. Mm. Without us doing that, it makes no sense to me that God would take away those things because God actually wants us to learn those very important, beautiful lessons. Mm. Yeah. There's another reason too, and that is that the sin is not God's creation, mm -hmm. it is our creation. Yeah. Now God, if he honours the gift of free will that he gave us, yeah. cannot remove from us something that we continue to wish to create. Mm -hmm. We have to desire to stop creating it before he can remove the cause of the sin. So, so, so we need to enter a state where we wish to stop creating it and we wish to use our will in such a regard that we want the sin to be removed. If we're in a place where we're, where we're continuing to create sin over and over again, we obviously don't wish to stop it. And if we don't wish to stop it, that's the use of our will. Now, God can't overcome and will never overcome the use of our will. Yeah. He, his laws are very much governed by the, this gift that he's, that he's given us. So, so most of his laws with regard to the interaction with the human soul, all of them honour the, the gift of free will that he's given us. Yeah. And so this means that if we're using our will to sin, and we're using our will to not be aware of what, what the sin is and what we're creating, and we're using our will to deny that it's actually happening, then God can't do anything more than watch us do all of that and have some external influences upon us, yeah. people or spirits that he tries to, you know... Or the laws themselves. Or the laws themselves trying to help us get to a condition of awareness. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit itself and divine love itself will not create our awareness. Mm -hmm. We have to become aware using our will through a process that is self-responsible. Yeah. And this is where it's, it's not a passive relationship with God. To no. have a relationship with God, it's a two-party thing. There's God and you, and you are wanting to embrace um, your will, your desires to love, all of these things, and then God can connect to us. Yes. But this, this is so important, what you said, and I just want to repeat it again, that God wants to honour this gift of free will. Well, not only does he want to honour it, he, he, he will not break it. Yes. He will never break it. Yes. And so if someone's there praying, look, I want to change, I want to... If, if the will is actually... And it has to be a soul-based will, not an intellectual one. We've, which we've we'll already, get to that in the next paragraph, won't Yeah, we? but we've already talked about that in previous Paget messages, how the mm -hmm. mind is different to the soul and yeah. the appetites and desires and, uh, and the emotions uh, relating to the soul, completely different to the mind. So we can think we have a desire to receive God's love, but while we're ignoring and ha not having a desire to work through our sin, where to actually see our enslavement to sin, then we can't receive God's love. So yeah. we're just fooling ourselves under those circumstances. Yeah. 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 But when it comes to this very specific issue of sin, then we, we, we must be aware of it and desire from us in that soul based way yes. to stop the sin. Yes. To, and then we can use our willpower, if you like, to stop sinning. But in a sense, we never will because our soul's already engaged in the sin. Yeah, the soul's appetites and desires change. are already engaged to sin anyway. Yep. That's what we've got to be desire. That's what we've got to desire to eradicate from ourselves. And we would never desire that, like if we can't even see that we're doing anything wrong. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. And, and so we have to have a soul-based desire to stop sinning. And only then can the cause of our sin be removed from us. Well, it's not only a soul-based desire to stop sinning, because some people have a general soul-based desire to stop sinning, but they are very reluctant to see the specific ways in which they're <laughs> sinning. So, so you've got to actually have a specific soul-based desire of that particular sin yeah. to stop sinning. Yeah. And that requires an awareness of the sin in the first place. 
we need an emotional and intellectual awareness that we're, that whatever we're doing is actually a sin. Yeah. So for, for example, the majority of people don't believe that having an addiction is a sin, but from God's perspective, having an addiction is a sin, it, whether it's emotional or physical, it's a sin. Yeah. It's missing the mark of the perfection of God's love, therefore a sin. It's missing, it, it's out of harmony with God's laws, therefore it's a sin. Most people on earth don't believe it's a sin. And so when you start talking to people about their addictions, most people believe, well, it's not a sin, it's just normal, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so they can't see their sin. And if they can't see their enslavement to a sin, they're not aware. If they're not aware, they can't ask for forgiveness for something they're not aware of. Yeah. And therefore, no love can flow under those circumstances. And therefore, the washing away of the penalties of such sin cannot occur. Yeah. It's just a simple matter of, of awareness is required that you're actually sinning. And then once you're aware and you can actually feel that you want to stop it mm -hmm. and it's an actual feeling, not a, not, a, not a thought, now they can engage the process of asking for God's forgiveness and divine love flows through the connection with the Holy Spirit because now the person's aware of the truthful condition that they're in and now the causes of the sin can be removed from the soul by God's love. Mm -hmm. But it won't happen until then. Yeah. 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 And I like the terminology you use in this um, message of the awakening to yes. the actual condition. Because sometimes it does feel like that, doesn't it? That we might have a lot of intellectual knowledge, but that moment when we emotionally get, oh, this is what I'm doing, it's like... And it's bad. And it's, yes, <laughs> and it's bad. Yes, it's, <laughs> yes. it's evil or it's causing it's a lot of damage, hurt, it hurts someone. people, it hurts me. You know, we see we see that it's bad. That's the awareness that's required because before you have that awareness, you will not ask for forgiveness. Yeah. You will not. And, and before you have that awareness, you will not be repentant. And you're saying you, the Holy Spirit's got Buckley's chance of connecting with you. Yes. you know, it just can't happen. No. There's no connection possible with the pipe because no. there's no awakening. Because God can't force the connection. You've got to allow the connection. You've got to generate the allowance of the connection. God will not force the connection of the Holy Spirit upon you, you or your soul. Mm -hmm. so, so God's not going to make you come to a state of awareness. God's not going to give you some love so that you can be aware either. What's God, what God is going to do is wait for you to become aware, wait for you to see what you're actually doing. And once you see what you're actually doing, now you're in a state where you could ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and therefore have the flow of the Holy Spirit, have the connection with the Holy Spirit and the flow of divine love into the soul, which will wash away the actual causes of yeah. The sin. So rather than having to pay for the penalty for the rest of your life or rather than having to pay through the law of compensation where eventually you've worked your way through the issues one by one, this is the beautiful benefit of God's love flowing is that it washes away the causes of your sin, yeah. but only after you've become aware. Yeah. Only after, not before. In a very specific way yes. about the specific sin and that it is a sin yes. and you feel the feeling that this is what I'm doing, this is a sin, and I would like to remove it. And it's wrong, and you feel not just a thought, but a feeling, a passionate feeling that, wow, this is really bad, and wow, mm -hmm. I would really like to not be in this condition, and, and you know, and desire the, the forg forgiveness that God's offering through the flow of, this, of God's love. Yeah. And, and you truly desire it. Now your soul, that's the prayer, Mm -hmm. And now your soul is open to the inflowing of, of divine love. And I see a lot of people who um, have no idea. They read the pageant messages over and over and over again, but they have no idea why God's love is not flowing into their soul to the yeah. point where they can become at one with God. And, and this is the reason, because they refuse to become aware of their sin. Yeah. They refuse to see what they're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And when they refuse to see what they're doing wrong, God's love is not going to open you up by flowing a bit into you first. You've got to do the work necessary to work out why you're wrong mm -hmm. and also do the work necessary to have a true heartfelt feeling that you want to fix it, yeah. that you do not want to do this anymore. Yeah. And, and then you've got some opportunity for God's love to flow. Because a lot of us, even after we have some intellectual and maybe even starting to have an emotional awareness of our sin, a lot of us still have the heartfelt feeling, but I need to hold on to it. 
I need to keep doing. I'm afraid yeah. to let go of this. This is what this is what makes me feel good. Or a lot of error-based false beliefs that, and that actually has to shift within us. Yes. We have to through start, the use of our will. Through the use of our will, to become sensitive to the pain actually of the sin, rather than having this false idea that it's a, a benefit to us. Yes. And to feel that emotionally. Yes. And only then you're saying. Yes. we can actually connect to the Holy Spirit and receive divine love. Yes, and only then are we actually being really sincere, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is no sincerity before that time. Yeah. <clears throat> so I feel that, you know, we can talk about the reception of divine love as much as anybody wants to hear it, but unless you understand that and you, you personally need to use your will to get into a condition where you become aware of your, where you are sinning. Yeah. You need to become aware of what you're actually doing in your personal life, what you're actually doing day by day that from God's perspective is a sin. Mm -hmm. And once you become aware, now there's an opportunity for you to enter a state of repentance. Yeah. And once you sincerely enter that state of repentance, and ask for God's forgiveness, now divine love can flow into your soul. Quite, yeah. It's quite simple. Yeah. But unless you become aware, you are not going to know you're sinning. Mm -hmm. You're not going to understand where you've sinned. You don't think that there's a problem. And so you're not going to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. And therefore, God's love will not flow. Yeah. It's quite simple. It's, easy. And it's, a sign, it's almost like an equation. Well, it is a scientific yeah. fact. This is the beautiful thing about all of God's laws. They all are mathematically certain. God's love will flow into your soul if you do what the mass tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the mass, in this case, the science of the whole process is you must first develop an awareness of your sin. Yeah. That's the first part of the equation, yes. isn't it? And that's where we see the majority of people we talk to have huge amounts of problems. You know, it takes years and years and sometimes decades and decades before they become aware that they've even had one sin, let alone mm. many, yeah. and, and law, let alone thousands, <laughs> you know, which is the average, the case for the average person on earth. And if it takes us 10 years to recognize one sin and we're that resistive to seeing the truth of what we actually do, then it's highly likely that divine love is only going to flow in little tiny dribbles for a long time to come yeah. <laughs> into yeah. our soul. Yeah. And we're far better off developing a strong desire for personal truth and becoming personally aware of every sin we yeah. commit rather than just making the assumption that we're relatively perfect, <laughs> but for some reason we're not receiving God's love. I don't understand why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a scientific fact that if you enter this state of complete awareness of your sin, including the desire to uh, be sorry for re or repentant for your sin, mm -hmm. and you ask for God's forgiveness, divine love will definitely flow. But it has to be a sincere, soul-based, heartfelt, aspiration from your soul yeah. it cannot be just an intellectual thought you can't just go oh now that i know the science of it all what i'll do is i'll just have a thought and it should all work no it doesn't work like that at all as no. we talked about in the previous message the mind has nothing to do with this process yeah. you have to enter that state in your soul yeah and if you think about the bulk of just about everything that we talk about um apart from things like faith and god and god's attributes and qualities Everything we do personally is to try and attempt people to start to engage this very process that we're talking about, isn't it? To, it is. To, get, to have an awakening to their actual soul condition as it is right now mm. and to grow the desire to actually feel that as sin, desire, feel the pain of it, remove that sin so that they can then yeah. enter this relationship with God and then, you know, we can wave them farewell because they're on their way. <laughs> way. And once they understand that if divine love stops flowing, then it's, a direct, it's directly caused by their resistance to see another sin. Yeah. And once they understand that, they'll go looking for that other sin that they're committing yeah. that they don't want to become aware of. Yeah. And, and once they understand that process, then it's highly likely they'll continue that process for as long as it takes until they're at one with God. Mm -hmm. But, and this is why a lot of people feel that, that we're very direct and most cool people would call us blunt or even brutal sometimes <laughs> with truth. But the reality is, unless you have a developed awareness, divine love cannot flow into your soul. So, 
So what we're trying to help each person do, and this is what we're trying to do with all of you out there, <laughs> we're trying to help you become aware of the personal truth of where you've sinned. And, and while it feels terrible when you hear about it, unless you become aware, you are not going to receive God's love. You are not going to go through the process of feeling sorry mm. as a feeling. You're not going to go through the process of even asking God for forgiveness because you don't think you've done anything wrong. Yeah. And that's the problem. And you said it feels terrible, but from my own experience, yes, initially, while you work through issues about facade, it does feel fairly confronting and often painful. But over time, when you begin to grow this will to actually engage the process for yourself, personal truth blunt as it, I want it even more blunt can you be more specific if you can see something I want to know because mm. it is actually a gift you don't have to do all the soul searching uh, on your own if someone can help you to become aware that's a wonderful thing yes but the reality also is that unless you have a seeking heart for truth no matter how much somebody talks to you you will not allow the awareness to develop yeah so so that's why I said in the first century you must seek first so you and a person who keeps on knocking keeps on asking is the person that open that you know gets the door open yeah and and what i notice that most people do on earth is they ask once and then when they hear something they don't want to hear they go oh that's a heap of crap i'm not believing all that and they go off in the merry way sinning mm -hmm. continuing to sin and then wondering why god's love isn't flowing to them when they ask for it yeah. Well, well, you're sinning and you're not wanting to be aware. Of course, God's love can't flow. You need to develop awareness first. This is a very, very basic principle that I wish that every single person who have ever heard divine truth un understood. You know, yeah. the, the reality is we see many people who have heard divine truth. They believe they can continue sinning and everything will be all right. Because the reality is most people, when they hear divine truth, don't even believe that they sin very much. Mm -hmm. They don't. But on earth, man, like everybody on earth, has a terrible amount of debt to yeah. pay for their sins. And, and if we were asked to pay for it all using the law of compensation way, it can make, take many hundreds of years or even thousands of years to pay for the penalties of such sin that we create in a very short lifetime on earth. I find it sort of uh, mystifying how people can feel that they don't have very much sin. If you look to the world around us, there's so much suffering. Yeah, but that's all somebody else's sin. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like? like I do. Like somebody, somebody asks me a question about their personal uh, situation. I tell them very clearly what I notice in their personal situation. They completely ignore it and tell me that I'm wrong. And then when somebody asks me about somebody else's personal situation, I tell them about that person's situation and they agree completely. Yeah. Why is that? Because the average person on this planet does not want to become aware of their own sin. <laughs> it's quite simple. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to be. <laughs> and that's why very little of God's love actually flows onto the earth at this particular point yeah. in time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's get on with the message because sure. it's important. <laughs> you want to read the next paragraph? Sure. I would not have mankind believe that any soul is compelled to stay in this condition of slavery to sin until the Holy Spirit comes to it with the Father's... Oh, I just need to reread the sentence. Sorry. You want me to read it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I would not have mankind believe that any soul is compelled to stay in this condition of slavery to sin until the Holy Spirit comes to it with the Father's love to bestow it in all abundance. For the mission of the Holy Spirit is not to awaken man's soul to a realisation of sin and death, but merely to bring to that soul this love when it, the soul, is ready to receive it. I've got to laugh because, honey, in both centuries, you love long sentences. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a bad, pro <laughs> bad habit I'm probably in. <laughs> okay, this is a really important part of the message, isn't it? It is. Firstly, the, let's look at the mission of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, is the conduit via mm -hmm. which love, God's love, flows. You could think of it as an energy conduit, and God's love is the emotion that flows through it. So this Holy Spirit cannot connect to the human soul without the human soul getting into at least a state of truth of a kind. And that requires at least seeing the truth about its sin. Mm -hmm. In other words, noticing and becoming aware that it actually has committed a sin of a specific nature 
and that it doesn't desire, it wishes to not do that anymore. And, and unless it gets into that condition, the Holy Spirit can't even make the connection. Now, the Holy Spirit's role isn't to somehow force that connection, mm -hmm. as, as I say there. It's not there to awaken the man's soul. It, 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 it's there only to make the connection after the soul itself has awoken. Yeah. So, so the soul must first awaken, then the Holy Spirit can connect. Once the Holy Spirit can connect, now divine love can flow. If you have a longing, a passionate soul-based longing for it to flow, it can flow. But if your soul is in complete unawareness, then of course the Holy Spirit cannot make the connection because it's the spirit of truth. It cannot make connection. And as, as such, while the connection is not made, no divine love can flow. Yeah. No divine love can flow to the soul. I also like here that you say, look, it's not the Holy Spirit's job to come along and shake you into awareness. That's correct. Because a lot of people are, in Christianity, there's a lot of kind of feeling that the Holy Spirit is this spirit that wanders around and kind of does stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm maybe trivialising that slightly, but not a spirit that wanders around, but a, a spirit that's sort of magical and mystical and will actually awaken you to yourself. And you're saying very specifically, no. It's not like that. No. You have to want to see the sin. You have to, um, in my notes, all right, we have to ready ourselves. We have to make ourselves ready yes. for the Holy Spirit yes. to be able to connect to us. That's yes. our responsibility, our job, our will-based Of course, effort. because God's laws are all based around our, the use of our will. You know, God can't force it because he's made laws which he will never break. Yep. that say, I will not force your will. Yep. You, you have to do it with your own will engaged. Yep. That's, that's why God doesn't do this. Yep. The other thing, part of this part of the message I feel that's important is that I didn't want people to believe that they're compelled to stay in the condition of slavery to sin, mm -hmm. right? Until the Holy Spirit comes. The, in slavery to sin is a, is a condition that you're choosing through your desire to be unaware. So, so to me, the most important thing that a person can really do is to start being aware of where they sin. Start noticing the sin. Yeah. Now, in, in my mind, the majority of people, you just have to tell them one thing about where they sin and they're enraged with you. That, now, I feel a lot of times I'm doing somebody a favour and instead I get <laughs> attacked. You know, I remember just recently we met with a, a group of people and I started talking about the man, how he sexually projects at, other, at women all the time and how that's actually a sin. He, would, he raged, about, raged about it for days and days and days and still is angry with me about it, won't talk to me, won't believe what I'm saying. And yet it prevents his connection with God. Yeah. It, it, to, to me, it makes no sense that a person doesn't want to know everywhere they sin. Yeah. Like, but that's the, how the majority of people on this planet are. They do not want to know how they sin. Mm. And, and unless you want to know, there is no hope for you in your connection with God. Yeah. None. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian, a Muslim who believes in God, a Christian who believes in God. It doesn't matter whether you're an atheist or a, any, any, from any walk of life. If you are unaware of what sin you are committing, you have no hope of ever having a relationship with God, right? Mm. And, and I feel it doesn't matter whether you read the pageant messages every day. Unless you have a desire to know where your sin is every moment, then you will not receive God's love. Mm. You will not. You will not become at one with God. Yeah. I love that it's like that because you can't fool God. You can't manoeuvre God, manipulate God, have any power over God. Yeah. You can't falsify or deceitfully try to apply mm -hmm. for God's love to flow into the soul, <laughs> which is what you would expect from God. <laughs> Absolutely. And it, this is the way that true character and integrity is built within yes. a person. Everyone who enters that kingdom of heaven, if you want to use the biblical term, yeah. they have a strong character that is not, there's no facade, no. There's no faking it. There's no shortcuts. They have done the work on themselves to become aware, to become aware, to desire something different, to desire the end of their pain and other people's pain. Yes. And that's the growth of true character. Yes. And, and I love that you say, look, I don't want mankind to believe you compelled to stay in this terrible, painful suffering condition. You don't have to. No. But 
you're going to have to do some things yourself. <laughs> Before you'll get out of that condition. Before you'll get out of it. And that's mm. your responsibility. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the beautiful thing when God gave us free will, he gave the, part of the gift of free will is making us the self-responsible beings that we are. And what I notice a lot of religious people do, and a lot of people who read the pageant messages also do, is that they believe that God will somehow magically wipe them clean of their sin without them needing to take some action to become aware of where they are actually sinning. Yeah. And, and it, it makes no sense from the perspective of God's viewpoint of will and, mm. and trying to make humankind completely responsible for the creation of their own sin. Yeah. See, see, God didn't create sin. Humans did. You create your own sin. Mm. Nobody else is responsible. You know, there's no devil influencing you, although there are many demons or spirits in the spirit world who love you sinning. <laughs> there is no, you know, powerful devil who, who in the end will, will get you to sin. And th there is just you, your will, and the influences that you come under and the exercise of your will into temptation that causes you to sin. Mm. And, and until you even recognize that you're sinning, how can the soul have an state? It's not in a state of awareness. Mm. How can it develop a state of awareness while you believe your sin is good? <laughs> it's not going to ever develop a state of awareness. Mm -mm. And that's why we said there, the soul has to get ready to receive love. Yeah. And that is not done by you receiving love beforehand. It's like you're in a probation before then. You've got to go through a process, then you get your license. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same on earth when we go to get a driver's license or something. We go through a probationary period where we work through different issues and we learn the laws and we learn how those laws govern us and we, and we drive with helpers and all those kind of things happen. And then we get our license. Mm -hmm. Right? It's exactly the same with regard to God with receive, receiving God, if you, receiving God's love. If you think of God's love as the license, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that it's the license to wipe away the penalties uh, and the actual causes of our sin. If you think of that as the license, it requires a whole heap of things for us to do to get ready. And, and when I say a whole heap of things, it's really only one simple thing, but over and over again with the different sins we commit. So the one simple thing is we have to become aware yeah. and we have to get to a state where we're sorry for what we do and we're not going to get into that state until we recognise that we're actually sinning and to see it as a sin. And then we become aware and then we may ask for forgiveness and now we get the licence, if you like. We now get the licence to rub away, well, God rubs away mm -hmm. the causes of our sin and, the, and therefore its effects as well. Um, but... But honestly, it's not going to happen without us first going through this period of becoming aware. And truthfully, that is, as we've mentioned, very difficult for people to do. Yes, but mostly are... because we're so embroiled in sin. Yes. You know, if, we, if mankind was without sin, then it would be very easy to, to receive God's love because every time we had a longing for it, we'd receive it. Yeah. But, but while we're sinners and we want to sin, it's very difficult. And the world as it is today is in, entrenched in sin, I feel, that yes. in that it's, it's normalised. People's sin it's, is It's not only normalised, as... it's, it's honoured. Yes. It's lauded. It's, yeah. uh, uh, it's, not a, it's approved of. It's, you it's know, rewarded. It's rewarded. Yes. <laughs> and so I do feel um, for those people out there who have been attempting to engage this process of recognizing your sin and coming to grips with it and just growing a will to actually let it go it's courageous work that you're doing and it does take time mm, but i don't see many people doing it <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with the statement but even most of the people who have listened to divine truth you look at you look at it it's true. over the over the years we've been teaching it now for me it's been like uh 2000 it's now 11 this is the 11th year i've been teaching it over that time, I've observed very, very few people have a desire to know where they sin. They just don't want to know. Yeah. And, and that's why you're not receiving divine love rapidly, because you don't want to know where you sin. If you wanted to know where you sin, you, you'd, be, you'd have a very good head start already. You, you'd already have received a lot of love and you'd already not be sinning very much. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why we don't have many friends, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well... I feel like I feel 
the momentum it's like a the sin on this planet is like a runaway train yeah uh, everybody thinks it's going down the right direction and and when you tell when you're a person putting your hand up and going no no you're going in the wrong direction and you stand in front of a runaway train most of the time you get run over right? and because the the momentum of the entire world is towards like honoring sin promoting sin hiding hi sin, highlighting sin hi hi choosing to call it something pretty when it's really yucky yes and, it's like yeah. yeah i can think of many ways that happens yeah. and and while the world has that viewpoint there's a tendency for us individually to have that viewpoint then and so when someone comes along like a voice in the wilderness says, <laughs> says hang on a sec you know did you notice then when you treated your husband or your wife that is a sin and that is the reason why you're not receiving God's love. And they go, that wasn't a sin. She deserved it. You know, that, you know, oh, that, everyone does that. Everyone does that. What are you talking about? You know, you're a bit you're, sensitive. You're a bit too sensitive. <laughs> and you know, what, you want me to be perfect? Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, but <laughs> you know, there, there's all these argumentations that are created, argumentative ideas and concepts, and even philosophical ideas mm. that are created to avoid the simple fact. And that is you just sinned. And you need to become aware of it before any goodness is going to develop within your soul. Yeah. <laughs> Quite simple. Yeah. 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 But perhaps we need to read the next paragraph too. Yeah. Do you want to read that one? Oh, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> the awakening must come from other causes that influence the mind as well as the soul and cause them to realize that the life man lives is not the correct life or one in accord with the demands of the laws of God or with the real longings of their own hearts and souls. Yeah, there's quite a lot in that little yeah. paragraph, isn't there? Yeah. Um, people say to me frequently that, you know, pageant messages do not, do not discuss emotions, desires, you know, and all this. So it's totally incorrect, of course. <laughs> and here's another example. Here we have to have real longing of our heart and our soul, right? We've got to we've got to start seeing that there, that there are influences upon our mind as well as upon our soul. Mm -hmm. And the two are very, very different to each other. We've got to start also recognizing what those influences are that are trying to influence us for good yep. and also trying to influence us for evil. Yep. And there are plenty influences for evil on this planet. And if you look at the prayer that I gave Paget, it's exactly the same. It talks about the resisting the temptations of evil. And who are the ones who are evil? Well, it's the people and the spirits who surround us who are constantly motivating us towards evil. The world itself is motivating you towards evil, right? So, so we need to start seeing that actually the awakening has to come from some kind of external influence to cause us to get out of this idea and concept that we're, we're already perfect or that we're already good enough. Yeah. And, and let's just see what's really wrong with us, right? Mm. And what, who are those people who are going to help us have the awakening? Well, it's certainly not a person who's already heavily engaged in sin. It's only going to be a person who's already worked through a lot of sin yeah. and has some kind of awareness about the fact that sin is happening. Now, there's all sorts of external influences and perhaps we need to discuss some of them. Sure. That cause the awakening of the mind, firstly. And remember, I've talked about this process in many discussions about how the mind has to go through a process yeah. and the soul has to go through a process. And the two processes, firstly, probably begin with the mind going through its process. Because we're so intellectually dominant on the earth at the And moment. we also yeah. have all this philosophical reasoning backing yeah. up our sin. Yeah. We all have all this concepts and ideas that say i'm not sinning i'm not sinning yeah. and here's the reason why i'm not sinning you know we've come up we, we've come up with this magical thinking in our mind you know that everything's going to be fine when it's not and quite plainly not and but we've done that because we want to you know avoid the feelings associated with sin yeah. so so what we need to do firstly is go through this mental awareness process that is required yeah. to see that we're actually sinning now, who's going to start that for us? Well, it's probably not ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I find it's almost impossible for it to be yourself. So firstly, it's God's laws, yeah. the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation. You being in pain is, a, is, a, is, is saying to you, you're sinning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? You're sinning. Where are you sinning? What are you doing that's causing this sin? That's the first thing you need to see. God's yeah. laws are structured in such a way as to pull you 
into an intellectual first process of awareness and then an emotional process of awareness that will eventually affect your soul to recognize your sin. Yeah, yeah. So that's number one. God's laws are constantly trying to help you. Yep. Right. Yep. Number two. <laughs> number two is other people who are in a better condition than you are of love. They will desire to help you to, to know where you're sinning. Right? The problem is when you have a conversation with them, you'll think they're being judgmental and you'll think that they're attacking you and you'll think that they... Or you'll think that then they're in a worse condition than you or... Possibly, that yeah. A lot, of, a lot of false perceptions people have of Correct. someone who's more humble, who's more gentle, who's more sensitive. Yes. There's a lot of prejudice actually. Prejudice against, against such people. And, 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 but there are spirits and people on earth, very few people on earth, mostly spirits, who are trying to say, here's a sin again, here's your sin again, here's your sin again. See that pain you're in? That's because you created it through something you chose to do or something you chose to not be aware of. Mm -hmm. You created it. You've got to become aware of the creations you have. This is what, this is what the, you know, the spirits who have achieved the process of becoming aware of this in are trying to help you become aware of yours. Yeah. So that, that's number two. Yeah. Number three, ethics. Ethics are a way for you to see where you're sinning. Now, by ethics, we're saying the simple golden rule that I said to, in the first century that many people before me actually taught and, and often get taught in church and other mm -hmm. places on the earth today. And that is what you would like other people to do to you, you should do to them. Or, or what you, you, you don't want other people to do to you, don't do to them. <laughs> yeah. you know, it, just, it just depends on which way you would like. But it's what you would like to have happen to you, you do to them. Yeah. Now, if you think about that simple awareness of ethics, then that will help you understand where you're sinning quite mm -hmm. extensively. Like it's just a simple matter of sitting down with your life, working out all the things that you don't like have happening to you and yet you are doing to other people and then you'll know where you're sinning. <laughs> and you're talking about the intellectual influences on the mind here or the influences on the mind. This can be a purely intellectual process, can't it? Yes, it can. It, it doesn't yeah. have to engage your feelings. You can be very... Um, uh, dry about the whole thing and say, well, this is what I do. This is what the other person does. And yeah, this is what I don't like have happening to me. This is, but I do this to other people, yeah. you know, straight away, you should be able to see where you sin. You're yeah. developing an awareness. Yeah. Now let that awareness settle into your soul. And then you've got some hope to work through the actual issues as to what causes you mm -hmm. to do those things. So, so that's number three. Number three was ethics. We yeah. needed to, we need to develop ethics. It needs to be something that is a part of our life and a part of our desires. Number four, we need to develop a desire for personal truth, right? Rather than always trying to, by having a desire to repel personal truth, mm -hmm. we need to develop a desire to want it. When you want things, God's laws operate in harmony with your desires. Yeah. So if you want personal truth and you really, really want it from your soul, you will get it. <laughs> So that's what we need to do, develop a desire to want it. Now, I've noticed that there are some things even inside of myself that I didn't, don't want personal truth about so much because I'm so worried or afraid. Fear is a major problem here yeah. of desiring personal truth because you get afraid. Yeah. You need to work through your fears so that you're always, uh, always wanting personal truth. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is that we need to now, number five, develop a desire to have those things. Yeah. The exercise of our will. Watch okay. how we exercise our will. Now, desire, developing desire is very much controlled by how much fear we have. Yeah. And we've got to start ignoring our fears and acting anyway. Otherwise, we won't develop desire. Yeah. Yep. So that's something we need to develop is the desire to ignore our fears, feel them, but ignore them, don't, don't act upon them. Feel them, but still go ahead with what you desire. Mm. Yeah. The number six is, um, and these are just off the top of my head, by the way. <laughs> number six is develop emotional awareness. It's okay to have an intellectual awareness of your sin, but a person with emotional awareness of the sin feels cut to the heart about what they've done. Mm. A person with an intellectual awareness has no emotional connection with that. 
So you're going to need to develop an emotional awareness of things and therefore a sensitive emotional soul. Yeah. You're going to have to allow emotional overwhelm. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven, have some faith that God created a good universe, that everything in the universe is there trying to show you where you're sinning. Yeah. And I feel if you, just those seven things, mm -hmm. if you did those seven things every day, you become aware very rapidly of where you're sinning and now you've got some hope to receive God's love. And so what you're talking about here in reference to the message is the things external to ourselves, and some of them are now internal, but yeah. they're, they're <coughs> principles, say, such as ethics, that's external to ourselves that, that can have can an apply. influence upon us, mm -hmm. upon our mind and our soul, that is necessary, really, before the Holy Spirit can connect to us. So it's not Correct. the Holy Spirit's going to have this influence on us no. surrounding the issue of sin. It has to be these other influences that we have to willfully engage in order for us to come to an awareness of the sin. Yes. Yeah. And I, I feel I've already mentioned God's laws, the law of attraction, the law of compensation and those laws. Understanding how those laws are operating in your life has a large effect. They're, they're God's messengers of truth to you. And in particular, they're God's messages of truth about your sin. Because wherever you have pain, that's an indication that there's a sin occurring. Mm -hmm. The key is to work through what the sin is and, and, and feel about it and get to a point of awareness about it. Now you have a hope of God's love flowing into your soul yeah. when you desire it because the awareness has developed. So, so what this paragraph is talking about is that there are external influences upon the mind and the soul mm -hmm. which will help the soul get into a condition of receptivity to divine love, yeah. to receptivity to the connection with the Holy Spirit. And as you mentioned, like all of God's creation is really designed to assist us with that. Yes. Yeah. But yes. we need to become sensitive and aware of these things. Correct. Yeah. And if we, design, we don't develop some kind of sensitivity and awareness, we will walk around thinking we don't sin or walk around not knowing how we sin and therefore not ever being able to receive God's love. Mm. And well, that would be sad. It would be sad, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned here that, um, that these external influences are going to help <clears throat> us to recognise that our lives are not the correct lives. Yes. That not they're not in accord with the demands of God's laws, yes. which you've mentioned. But this last sen this last part of the sentence I'd like to ask you about is that it's going to cause us to realise that our lives are not in accord with the real longings of our own hearts and souls. Yes, and I think this is where, when we're so steeped in sin, we're so steeped in our facade and our addictions that we think there are a whole heap of things we want that once you connect to your real soul and its condition, you realise you don't want them anymore. Yeah. So, so, for example, the average male on this planet thinks that he wants to have sex with hundreds of different women in the course of his life. Mm -hmm. And he, he actually justifies it through a lot of philosophical reasoning. That's how we were, all oh, men are like this, share your seed around, all these other reasonings that go around justifying that position. But once he's worked through his addictions, he realise he only wants one woman, his other half, the soulmate mm -hmm. in his life, and he'll realise he doesn't want anybody else. <laughs> right? Yeah. So there, there's an example yeah. of the real longings of the soul being something completely different than what his appetites and desires associated with the addictions associated with the flesh mm -hmm. um, are demanding from him right now. And isn't it true that often, say, this man feels like, oh, I've got to go out, sow my wild oats, I've got to, I, you know, a lot of times that's driven by an avoidance even of feeling lesser than other males, feeling, in, uh, feeling sadness with women, feeling... Yeah, there's a lot of emotional reasons. And so even the real longings of the heart are really about the sadness or the, the, those other things that they're avoiding, the lack of worth. Yeah, but see, I call them the longings of my hurt heart, the which hurt is not, heart, not yeah. the same as my real self. Yeah. And here in this message, I'm talking more about the real longings of my real self which are completely different even to the feelings of your hurt self. And, and, and most people are even avoiding the feelings of the hurt self yeah. and instead going into their facade and the addictions that generated mm -hmm. above in this facade self. But, but the reality is the real self, once you've worked through the hurt and everything and your facade, you get to this point where you realise, 
I don't want lots of women. I want one woman. That's mm -hmm. how God created. Or if you're a gay soul, you want one man or woman, you know, yep. depending on what your same gender is. You realize that that is the real state you are in. So, for example, uh, you know, we could think of a lot of sexual examples uh, where people like bisexuality, for example, a lot of people think, oh, there's such a thing as bisexuality from God's perspective. Well, no, there's not. There's, mm -hmm. there's either homosexuality or heterosexuality from God's perspective where you have, and in fact, I would call it in the end, it's just soul sexuality where you only want, you don't even want to have a sexual interaction with other, you know, it's not like every woman is somebody who's a target. It's only one woman. So, mm -hmm. so it's only the other half of the your soul. The specific woman. The specific woman yeah, yeah. that you really want to sexually engage yeah. with. So. God's way hones it right down. And when you connect to the real long as your soul, you realize that. You, but before then, you won't. When mm -hmm. you're in your sin, you won't. Mm -hmm. When you're in doing all these other things, you know, and thinking it's all justified and right and philosophize about it and think it's all good, you won't. Yep. You won't get to that state. You're very far away from that real self-longing. Yes. So you're saying that even now, without us really developing many of the qualities of our real self, because we're living in our facade and our hurt, even now we have specific longings that are within us as a part, part of, of our what real God self. created. Yep. Um, that, that we're not recognizing. That we're not, we're completely detuned or uh, not even sensitive. unaware of. Completely yep. insensitive to. Yeah. Yep. And as a result, so for example, there's a real longing in everybody's soul not to have power over other people. Hmm. Now look at that. Yeah. That one thing, the majority of, earth, majority of people on earth want power over other people. They want control. They want to manipulate. They want to push somebody around and boss somebody around. Yet these are not the longings of your soul. These are your addictions and your facade in play and your hurt, you acting out your hurt. That's what's going on here. And it's causing sin. And unless you recognize the sin it's causing, unless you become aware and you want to stop it, you're not going to receive any God's love until you... You reach that state yeah. until the soul gets itself into the state where it can connect with the Holy Spirit. You will not receive God's love. Yeah. Quite simple. Okay. Yep. Your turn. Until this awakening comes, the soul is really dead so far as it's having a consciousness of the existence of the truth of its redemption is concerned. And such death means a continuance in such thoughts of sin and evil and in the life which leads only to condemnation and death for long, long years, it may be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here he's saying, look, until you have an awakening to your own sin, from a soul perspective, the soul's dead. It's shriveled up in a tiny little <laughs> speck. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I quite often reminds me, of like a dry sponge, if you like. You know, yeah. It could receive a lot of water and it could, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's just a dried up old, squeezed up <laughs> old mess, right? Yeah. And, and that's exactly what our soul is like when it's unreceptive to, to love truth and unreceptive to even it's the truth about its own condition. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is just dead. Mm -hmm. There's no life flowing through it, right? And while it desires to stay in that place, it will engage sin and error like it's a like you know like it's in a lollipop stand you know yeah. just or or you know candy oh, store yeah. just wanting to get it all in and experience it all right and and yet in that place it's just causing more dead more you know more deadness of the soul when it comes to it, how god created us to be truly alive yeah and specifically towards the truth pertaining to its redemption, to yes. its eternal life, to its uh, eternal happiness. Yes, it can't completely... recognise that actually it's doing the wrong thing even. Yeah. It can't recognise, and, and a, lo a lot of souls in this state won't even recognise God. They won't, and if they do recognise God, they think God's a God of wrath, that, you know, who's going to punish them or punish others for them. And, and you know, it won't recognise love. It won't... Love could come along and I doubt whether love would ever do this, but slap, it, slap you in the face and you wouldn't know. <laughs> and um, you, you won't see your true state and nature. You, you won't even see how God's laws are structured to even get you out of this state. You won't even notice that. That's how dead you are. Yeah. Right? And yeah. that's the condition of the average person who passes into the spirit world. Yeah. They are dead as to the, the concepts of their redemption. Yeah. D completely dead to them. Just completely unaware, completely removed from them. Yes. 
And hence, those people need to have a place mm -hmm. in the spirit world where they can live until they have some awareness. And that place is the hells. Yeah. The hells are specifically, have been con specifically constructed by those souls themselves as a place where, uh, where you want to remain unaware. That's why the hills exist. It allows people to stay in states of unawareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so one, as soon as we make the choice to be aware, it's highly unlikely we'd arrive in hell as deep as we would have before, because now we've chosen to become aware of our sin. Yeah. yeah it's a, it's, it's that's a, all we need to do. It's a huge thing, step, isn't it? It's a it's huge, a step. huge step. Yes. And and it, it can take some years while we're here on earth. Yes, actually and even in the spirit world, world can take thousands of years yeah. before a person becomes aware. If they choose to remain unaware, they will remain unaware. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's no, nothing anybody else can do about it because, because the awareness has to come, has to be a part of the exercise of the soul's will, mm. has to come from within you. Mm -hmm. The awareness has to develop. Yeah. The desire even for awareness has to develop from within you. Yeah. 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 So a very important concept. Like... Short message, but like this is one of the most important things we were trying to say to Paget mm -hmm. that he, he was stopping the flow of divine love into his soul because he was unaware of where he was sinning and he did not wish to become aware. We talked to him about many aspects, some of which are not recorded, mm -hmm. but his smoking, for example, and other things that he was doing. And, and, in one, and, and I think there is a, a, a slight uh, in the 1917 or 16 messages, there is a slight um, indication yeah. that he was that he felt bad about some of the things he was doing, yeah. like because it, because he recognised that he start that he'd sinned, yeah. right, and he was despondent about his sin, yeah. and we refer to that in a message. But the reality was, most of the time he was not even despondent about his sin. Most of the time <laughs> he was engaging in his sin just the same as everybody else was on earth, yeah. and not seeing or becoming aware. And we're trying to say to him, look, this is stopping you from receiving God's love. The more you stop yourself from receiving God's love, the less we can say to you, yeah. the less truth we can give you, the less we can help you, the less of God's love you're going to receive. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point in the end where he didn't want to talk to us at all. Yeah. Because every time we spoke to him, we just had another thing to say about his condition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and isn't that like many people who spend time with us? We, we spend time, the first year they're happy to spend time with us, the second year they're now starting to feel a bit, the third year they're now starting to feel that we get, that, that you know, that all they hear is negative things about themselves. By the fourth and fifth year, most of them have gone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or they, or they just don't want to uh, have much contact with us. Yes, because they don't want to see where they sin. Yeah. And, and their will has been exercised in that direction. That's why they leave. Yep. And, and yep. this is a huge problem on this planet. It's a huge problem for reception of God's love. Yep. Um, unless you want to see where you sin, you can't receive yep. it. And as you say here in the message, that death <laughs> to the means of redemption, which is essentially what we're saying, um, it means that you're going to continue in thoughts of sin and evil yep. and the life is just going to get worse and worse yes. for as long as you want to stay dead to that idea of, about of redemption. redemption and the truth of your real condition. Yes. And there is a very big, um, what I would call resistance on this planet, about the concept of redemption, right? Most people don't feel they need redemption. Mm. And, and it's because it requires you to see your condition before you can see what you need to be redeemed from. Yeah. Most people do not want to see that they need redemption. Mm. Right. And, and that's why they are refusing these very scientific principles that I've been teaching for 2000 years yeah. about redemption yeah. and how important they are for the happiness of your life on earth and in the spirit world. The life while you live here and after you pass is going to very much be determined by you and whether you desire redemption. Mm -hmm. And the only times you're going to desire redemption is if you recognize your sin. <laughs> so it gets back to this same problem. Recognize your sin. Develop a desire to recognize your sin. It's funny, isn't it, how often people don't want to know about their sin at all. And then therefore they don't even think they need redeeming 
<laughs> but then you can go through a process of becoming aware of so much sin and feel that you're completely beyond redemption because you've got so much of it. Yes. <laughs> but God doesn't feel that. No. Yeah. 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 In fact, but with God's love, any person, there's been people on this planet who in a very few short years have caused so much devastation that they, that, that, you know, without God's love, they would have remained in the hells for thousands and potentially millions of years. Yeah. Um, but because of God's love, they have been redeemed. Yeah. And there's indications of that in the pageant messages, like people like Nero and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, other Caesar, Caesar you know, Caesar and, yeah. and ones like this, who, who developed quite a strong propensity towards sin yes. in their life on earth, yeah. uh, and yet passed, spent many, many years being in complete unawareness of their sin. Yeah. And then eventually they were helped to become aware of their sin, and as soon as they became aware of their sin and understood the law, they engaged the laws. Mm -hmm. And within a few hundred years, or in, in both cases, less than a hundred years, they were at one with God. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it does not have to be thousands and thousands of years. But unfortunately for the majority of people, there's so much arrogance on this planet and there's so much desire to avoid and deny. That it's very, very difficult for the average person to even want to become aware of mm. their sin. And I think most people aren't aware of how heavily sin weighs upon us, even if we're justifying it, even mm. if we're rationalising it or minimising it or saying it's really not a sin at all. It actually weighs so heavily on the soul, doesn't it? Yes, and, it does. And receiving God's love and receiving forgiveness from God about that sin and f essentially forgiving yourself for the sin, it's like a, f a freedom that yes. most people have never experienced. experienced. Yeah. yeah. And I also feel on this planet, sin's like a dirty word now, isn't it? It's like yeah. whenever we talk about the concept of sin, you can feel internally most people just close down. They get angry. They get angry, you know. Don't raise me religious yeah. things about sin. And, yeah. you know, there's so, much, uh, there's, there's so much negativity about the concept of sin. Sin, all sin is, is missing the mark of perfection. Mm. That's what it is. Or you could say it is also breaking God's laws of love. Yeah. It's the same thing. And, and what God wants us to do is uphold and, and, and stick, stay within the laws of love for happiness to occur. Mm. And whenever we sin, we're causing our own unhappiness. Yeah. So every little bit of unhappiness that we're personally experiencing is directly the result of our own sins. Yeah. Right? And we need to see this um, before we will progress. But the world is governed to sort of even the word sin is dirty. <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> I think that, do you think that's because a lot of people have been shamed through the... Of course, the, judged the, and shamed. Judged and shamed yeah. uh, in religious context and uh, made to feel that they're unworthy because of sin and yes. they're, they're sinners and the, the terrible things that are not what we're referring to. No. That people associate with it. But in the end, their, react, their strong, angry response to the word is about a lack of humility on their part Correct. to the past hurt that they're not experiencing. Correct. And their past sin. Yes. <laughs> and their desire to avoid the knowledge of sin. And their desire to sin. sin. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we've got to do is get God's definition of things. God doesn't want to judge you with your sin. You're already being judged by the laws. The laws are already exacting their penalty from your life. That's why you're in pain. Mm -hmm. right? So it's sort of like a person who jumps off a building. Of course, you're going to have some pain because when you hit the ground, if the building's too high, you're going to hurt, right? And if it's really high, you're probably going to kill yourself. You yeah. get, you know, and there'll be pain involved in, your, in doing it. And, and it's exactly the same with all of God's laws. You break them, there's automatic pain. We need to understand that we're the creator of our own pain by our choice to avoid living in harmony with all of God's laws. Yeah. And God's just saying to us, look, every time you're in pain, you're just living out of harmony with one of my laws. That's mm. all. So, so you can choose to live in the harmony with the laws. That's your choice. Or choose to live out of harmony. You're going to get the penalty of the law. Yeah. But, but God's not just going there, you dirty, <laughs> shameful person, because, <laughs> you know. No, and I, I feel so much uh, people get so touchy because of this idea about worth, whereas God doesn't view anyone as unworthy. No. And, and in fact, we're so worthy that God feels that, that God created us originally without sin. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, that's how worthy we are to yeah. have, not have sin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Um, but to come nearer to my point of my discourse, <laughs> <laughs> 
The soul that is existing in sin and error will have, sooner or later, to pay the penalties for such sin and error. And there is no escape from the payment of these penalties except in the redemption that the Father has provided by the new birth. These penalties are only the natural results of the operation of God's laws and they must be endured until the full penalty is paid. Mm -hmm. Even though a man may progress to higher condition of soul excellence and have much happiness, yet he must pay the last farthing and thus release himself from these penalties. Mm -hmm. With much love, I am your friend and brother Jesus. Okay. Here we're basically saying is that if we choose to not engage the laws of redemption, then basically we are going to have to pay for every single sin we have ever committed. And the laws will demand that we pay for every single sin we've ever committed until it's done. Mm -hmm. And that process may take 10,000 years, 100,000 years, however long it takes, depending on how many sins we've committed. Mm. But there's an alternative. <laughs> You were going to say that? Uh, if we consider what sin really is, that it's a condition within our soul, so it's not just our actions, but our thoughts, our desires, our uh, words, our lack of action sometimes, all of these things. If we consider that and we consider then with that definition how many sins we must commit before lunchtime for most people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then consider, Before they've even had breakfast. Yeah, before breakfast. <laughs> then consider that the impact of your statement there that every, the, the slow way without God is that you're going to have to pay for every single one of those mm. through the operations of the law of compensation. Yes. Um, it's a fairly... It's a fairly daunting thing. Daunting thing. But it is what, unfortunately, most people engage. Yeah. That's the laws that most people engage because they refuse to understand the laws of redemption. Yeah. The laws of redemption require the things we've mentioned. Yeah. They require us first to be aware, become aware that we're sinning. To Yes, to want to be aware. Obviously, you're not going to become aware <laughs> if you don't want to be exactly, aware. Exactly, but there's the will involved, isn't of there? Of course, that We yeah. must want to, to be, be aware. aware. Then we become aware. Then we can become aware. And then we feel about it. We feel it's actually like, Do we sin. feel it's actually so sin yeah. or not? Yeah. Like, we've got to get to the point where we feel that it's actually a sin. Then we have the hope of asking God for forgiveness of that sin. Yeah. Now, that is a much more simple process yeah. than having to go work through the law of compensation for years and years and years and years mm -hmm. in our future life. And the reality is that most people, in an effort to avoid the workings of the laws of compensation, commit more sins yes. to, through their addictions to yes. avoid the pain that's naturally increasing in their life. They do more and more things to yes. try and get away from the workings of the law, which only compounds the effects of the law upon them so that by Correct. the time they enter the spirit world, things are pretty dark. Yes. Whereas they have this other opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. Which is only requires hum humility. Yeah. So really what we're saying to people is if you cannot see where you're sinning, it's because you're not humble enough to see where you're sinning. Mm. It's not because you don't want to engage the process of humility. Yeah. Right? And part of that process of humility is being what is wanting to know the truth about what you're doing in your life, mm. wanting to know where you sin. Yeah. And if you want to know where you sin, eventually you'll know where you sin. And once you know where you sin, you now can engage God's law of forgiveness Mm -hmm. which is a part of his laws of divine love, you can now establish a connection with the Holy Spirit and love can flow into you and the penalties of such sin and the causes of such sin can be wiped from you. Yeah. But until, unless you do that, it will not occur. Mm. It ha has to, you have to engage this process yourself. Right. So if we recap the, the main points of your message. Sure. <laughs> the first one was that, look, the Holy Spirit can't connect to you. You can't have an inflowing of God's love until you have an awakening of your soul, until you want to be aware in this yes. way that we've spoken about at length. Yes. The second major point was, um, or you want to elaborate on no, that no, point? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that it's not the Holy Spirit's job to wake us up to no. our sin. And in fact, the Holy Spirit can't wake you up. Can't do it. Can't come along and give you a good shake. There are other influences yes. that are operating 
through the working of God's laws and through our uh, through and the through creation. God's love. Like uh, ever, all of these things that ha happen as external influences are expressions of God's love, yep. but they're not the personal inflow of God's love. Exactly. They're expressions of God's love. He influences other people who know the truth about your condition to tell you your condition, for yep. example. That's one of his influences. Yes, yep. yes. And, and all of these sort of natural laws or concepts like ethics and the workings of the laws of attraction and compensation and cause and effect, they're all there designed to bring us to this awakening of our sin. Yes. So it's not the Holy Spirit that's going to do it. We have to do the work and make ourselves ready. And, and desire and to become aware. Desire to become aware and desire forgiveness, ask for, for forgiveness. Yes. Then God's love can flow into us via the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because we're in a condition where, where we're connecting to the truth about our sin. Yeah. And the final point is, unless we do that, then there's going to be a slow grinding of the laws upon us. And there's going to be, oh, and unless we do that, we're going to live out a life of sin. Yes, and probably compound our sin. And compound our sin. We're going to, we're going to live dead to the idea that of redemption, of redemption yep. that we have an opportunity for redemption. We're going to keep sinning and it's going to be a very slow, painful process yes. to come to grips with our sin. Yes, yeah. which is what the majority of people who have heard divine truth are going through right now. The majority of people who have heard divine truth have not been engaging the laws no. of divine love. They've been engaging the laws of natural love by force. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being forced on them. The laws will operate. And most people we know are not desiring truth at all, personal mm -hmm. truth. And in fact, when we have discussions with, about personal truth with them, they instantly reject it and they instantly become angry. They usually in, instantly reject us as well. When all we're trying to do is help you enter this state where you can become aware. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. We love you enough to do that even risking your anger and even risking your attack and the reason why we do that is because we care about you enough to not want you to have to go through this painful process that you're currently engaged in and instead work through the process that god designed for you to work through to get out of a condition of sin and and honestly i would advise all the people who are listening to to Start to engage this process of wanting to see where you sin. Desire to know where you sin. Let yourself understand what a sin is. Let yourself use those things that we have listed in this session. There were seven or eight things that I just listed off the top of my head that you need to use to allow yourself to work through the concept that you are sinning and get to the point where you realize your sin. Once you've realized your sin and you feel it in your heart and soul, now talk to God about it, because now you have a hope of connecting with the Holy Spirit and receiving some of God's love and having this sin and its cause wiped away from you. Yeah. So, so do that. Don't, st stop, stop blocking the process by denying your sin. Mm -hmm. Stop blocking the process by not wanting to be aware of what's personal truth, the personal truth situation you're in. And stop blocking it through this whole, oh, it's all too much. I'm all just terrible, horrible person. Now that I've got to face it, oh, I'll just go into self-attack. Yeah, well, that's it, a sin too. It's a, exactly. <laughs> self-attack is a sin. Compounding the sin. Like you're just compounding the sin. Yeah. Like self-attack, self-punishment, self-judgment, it's all sin. Like at the end of the day, it's all out of harmony with God's love. God doesn't do that to you. You do it to yourself. You're just sinning more. You've got more to pay for. <laughs> like, it, like it, honestly... It is far better for you to know what you do than it is for you to not know. Yeah. And, and the reason why is because once you know what you do, you then have the chance to choose to see the sin, to feel about it, to talk to God about it. And once you're in that place, now you have a hope of receiving the shortcut way of dealing with your sin, which is this beautiful grace mm -hmm. that God's offered you on, under this one condition. And that is you must first see and become have an awakening to your own sin. And not only just an awakening to your sin generally, you need to have a specific awakening to each specific sin mm -hmm. in order for this to occur. Yeah. Now, now that may take you initially uh, a fair bit of time to develop the awareness and the desire the, and the awareness. But after a while, the more uh, once you start receiving divine love, all of a sudden they'll be exposed to you other areas where there's sin, right? And it's not 
that the divine love itself is exposing it, but because you now feel God's love, you will now be able to feel more sensitively the, air, the air, uh, areas in your life where you sin. The contrast right? between the contrast. love and what you're actually doing. Correct. And, and, but that won't happen at all unless you first go through this process. And I feel it's very, very sad that people who are reading the pageant messages regularly, who are opposing the things that we are teaching at this point, um, do not understand this very, very principle because actually the majority of them are fully engaged in the sin yeah. and therefore not receiving Holy, God's love, not connecting the Holy Spirit. And the only feelings they receive from spirits are from spirits uh, are from spirits mm -hmm. who are in the same condition as themselves, wanting their addictions met and feeling good when they are met. Yeah. And that's very, very sad. So what we would recommend to everybody to start, just go through this process. Even if, even if you don't do anything else, go through this process of desiring to become aware of your sin, desire an awakening to your sin, where you start to feel what it is, what it feels like, where you allow yourself to go through that process, because if you can do that, now you've got a chance to connect with God and God's laws of love and connect and feel God's love into your soul if you have a longing for it. Before then, there is no chance. <laughs> and so that's probably what we'd like to yeah. leave everyone at home with. And we hope that that has encouraged people to reanalyze their desire for personal truth, mm -hmm. because this is what this is really all about. Yeah. Look at how much you want to know about yourself, because what we notice is the majority of people have very little desire to hardly know anything about themselves. Yeah. And especially not from a soul perspective, from yes. this feeling, feeling the truth about themselves yes. and desiring to feel where they are actually sinning yes. and the impact of that sin. We find generally that we only have to tell a person once where they're sinning and that's the last we see of them. So there are people who have come along for two or three years listening to Divine Truth and then we have a personal interaction with them where we tell them about one of their sins and we never see them again. That's how resistant the mo most people are mm -hmm. to this particular message. Yeah. And those and those who who stay and maybe listen, very few of them actually then engage with that that truth that's been presented to them from yes. a soul perspective. The majority of them just dismiss it. it out of hand. Even the if they say, "Oh, thanks for that," yeah. there's a lot of dismissal emotionally. Of course, yeah. and and the majority we find just basically say, "Oh, yeah, no, that's not true." AJ doesn't know, or Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about. Depends on usually it's AJ because they don't believe I'm Jesus yet either. But uh, which, by the way, happens to be another sin that you will work through at some point, right? Not believing somebody who's telling you the truth is actually a sin. But but the the reality is, you you need to work through all of these particular things in order to become at one with God. So mm -hmm. you're better off doing this now mm -hmm. and you're better, off, you're better off developing a quality where you're open to the concept of your sin rather than completely shutting it down every time you hear from somebody about it. And so I feel quite strongly that the majority of people who are listening to Divine Truth at this point in time <coughs> need to develop a much stronger desire to become aware of their sin Mm -hmm. A much stronger desire to have an awakening to their sin mm -hmm. and a much stronger desire for personal truth than they currently have. Yeah. And if they do do that, then they'll start to receive the benefits of God's love flowing into their soul rather than being completely closed off to the love flowing. Yeah. And if they do that, then we will see some real progress amongst different people on earth. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, those people will be able to more easily share God's truth with others. Yeah. Right. So, so unless people who are listening engage this message mm -hmm. fully, there is no real hope of divine truth growing on the planet. Right. We need to each individually engage this message fully. Yeah. And that's why we feel it's so important to discuss it today. <laughs> It's been a great discussion. Yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed the discussion and uh, and hopefully we will see you practicing the principles <laughs> from the discussion. And because uh, uh, if you do, you will also we'll also enjoy your company because that's exactly what we do. <laughs> and so what we would like to do is encourage you to do that and encourage you instead of having this inexorable laws just grinding away on you, on your soul, 
we encourage you instead to engage the law of divine forgiveness, which is all about God's laws of love, by firstly becoming, having an awakening to your own sin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and realise that unless you do that, the whole truth of God's love flowing into the soul is not going to be available to you. you. The only way God's love is going to flow into your soul is for you to go through the personal process of becoming, of having an awakening to your own sin. So we'd like to thank Mary for her time thank today you, and Alan. also for our guys recording. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that message and, and it's given you something to ponder about with regard to your future.